Hello there, this is Alexander from sciencecourse.net and today we're checking out these two beautiful and incredible samplers by Teenage Engineering, the KO2 and the Medieval. We're going to do a brief overview of their features, but also talk about all of their differences to help you choose one over the other one, or just get both. So here we have the Teenage Engineering KO2 or the EP133 and the Medieval version which is the EP1320. These two units are pretty much identical, they can do the same stuff. They're both samplers and they both have the punching effects and everything that we're going to talk about today. And they have just a few differences to set them apart, but I don't think that those differences are that important for you to choose one over the other one. I think it's mostly about the aesthetics. I prefer the KO2 aesthetics wise, but you might prefer the medieval version and this color palette. So for anyone who doesn't know what these things are, we're gonna do just a quick overview of what you can do with them, all of their features, and then we're gonna talk about their differences. Both the KO2 and the medieval are samplers. That means that you can load samples using the USB connection you have over here, or you can sample using the onboard microphone that both those units have. They both come with a lot of stock sounds. The KO2 has your standard, you know, electronic music samples, and the medieval version has all the medieval samples that Teenage Engineering sampled in the past few years, which is okay, I guess, I mean, most of them are kind of usable because they're drum sounds, but the more specific medieval themed sounds, yeah, are fun for a few times, but after that, I don't see myself using them that much. So the workflow in both units is that you have your project and you can load samples in four banks, A, B, C, and D. I've loaded some samples. So when you have your project, you can then load samples in those banks. Let's go to D, which is empty. To load a sound, you just press sound and you can type any number between one to 999. Or you can just scroll through samples using the plus and minus buttons. You cannot do a lot of tweaking on the sounds you import on those devices. You can change their volume. You can change the pitch. And you can also further edit the sound by using shift and sound, where you can change the start point and end points. You can control an envelope. And you can also have this timing thing that actually 
does some kind of warping in the sound if you have longer samples and can match your BPM. I haven't really tried that because I don't load like loops on the KO2 or the Medieval, but it's a cool feature if you want to have loops inside of the units and have them match your BPM. Now I loaded an empty project so you can see how you can create your own patterns with it. To do that, you can do it by step, meaning that you have here your bars and you can just, you know, record sounds on any step you want. Let's say I want this one and this one. But you can also record live. Another cool way to add samples is to use the timing knob that you can set your time and just have a, a repeater. So you can load a sample on 12 pads for four banks, meaning that you have 48 samples for any project. And this is the main reason why I love this device, is that you have an abundance of samples to work with. I like to use samples mostly for drum parts, so having all those sounds is really, really creative and really fun. If you compare that, for example, to the Digitact, the original one that I have, you can only have like eight samples at once, which is very, very limiting. Here you have all the samples you need to create a drum part or a simple song idea. By the way, you're not limited to one bar. You can record, I think, up to 99 bars, which is kind of extreme. And lastly, you can also play any type of sound chromatically. You can just choose a sound and press keys. And now all the keys are a different note. After we have a pattern going on, that is a scene. So now we have scene one. And if I want to proceed to another scene, I can commit by using shift and main. And now I have the exact same thing on scene number two. The idea behind scenes is that you can change stuff between them and have like a song structure at the end. So now let's talk about the infamous fader. My fader was working from day one. I didn't have any problems with it, but yeah, it was a full crazy fader gate story with the broken faders in the first bunch of, you know, KO2s. I think that now the problem is fully addressed so you don't have to worry about it. And the fader is actually a a really really important part of this instrument so the fader can do a lot of stuff and everything it does it affects the whole group so now for example i have these two groups and i can and i can choose what the fader does by holding fader and choosing one of the buttons right here so now seven is level so now that I have this pattern, I can go to group B and just bring in another group. I can change the tuning for the whole group and the pitch. Mod is something like vibrato. You can do a lot of stuff with a fader and it's also a great way to perform with the KO2 or the Medieval. And last but not least, we have effects. Effects are in two categories. One is the send effects and the other one is the punching effects. But now I think it's the perfect timing to bring in the Medieval and talk about the differences between the two units because 
most of the differences are in the effects section. So one main difference is the sand effects. I have some similar, you know, patterns on both devices, so we can listen to the differences between sand effects and also punching effects. So here we have the reverb. And let's just listen to this one. Yeah, the reverb is quite different in the medieval version compared to the KO2. It's called, I think, torture chamber reverb, which is like within the theme of the medieval version. And it's a lot more cavernous and, you know, uh, hollow in comparison to the KO2, which is like your standard, you know, reverb. So now let's go to the delay. Your standard, you know, digital delay. So yeah, the echo on the medieval is much more diffused and much darker than the digital delay, which is much cleaner on the KO. So now let's go to the chorus effect on the KO2. Just your standard chorus. And here, on the medieval version, you have an ensemble effect, but also a dimension effect, which is much more similar to a chorus. Actually, the dimension is, is using a delay to create this chorusing effect. By the way, chorus is created with a delay. But let's hear the ensemble effect, which is also a chorus effect. By the way, it's kind of weird that in the medieval version, you cannot see the levels of the parameters you're modifying for the effects and you can do that here on the KO2 much easier to understand where you're at here they have this graphic that takes space for no reason I think and yeah you cannot see where you're at next effect distortion on both devices kind of similar to both devices I really like the distortion on both units. It's, I think it's the same, the exact same distortion. Uh, really nice, really, you know, crunchy and aggressive, but without destroying everything you're doing. So I use it quite a lot. And lastly, you have a filter effect, which is also the same in both devices. It's pretty cool to use it because you have a resonance control that you don't have in the low pass and high pass filters you have on the fader. So if I have it 100%, I think it's probably the same on the medieval version. Let's have it 100%. Let's add. Yeah, 
quite different. I mean, I think that the resonance of the medieval version is not that powerful as in the KO2. Yeah. For sure. I prefer the resonant filter that you have on the KO2 because it's more versatile. You have like a full resonance control um, that goes like way up. Also keep in mind that you can sync all EP units with other uh, TE gear like the OP1 by using a cable and you have your sync in and out ports here. So I have like the master clock being the KO2 and the medieval is using the external clock. So lastly, let's check out the punching effects, which are amazing, an amazing way to perform using the KO2 and the medieval. So what are punching effects? This 12 pads right here all have a different effect and you can access that while you have something playing by holding the effects button and pushing one of them or any of them at the same time. They have a lot of effects in the punching mode. They have low pass filter and a high pass filter. They have a sample swap that is zero. They have pitch effects and all sorts of effects that are synced and really performative and really great to have. So let's have a listen to some of them and see how they interact with your song. So here I have a high pass filter and as you can see, I can press it harder to close the filter and release it to have less amount. It's incredible that you can combine any of them or all of them at the same time but what i find kind of tricky to do is that i always have to have this effects button pressed all the time and yeah it's kind of flimsy you know to be able to access everything i would like to have a way of just pressing it and have the punching effects enabled and then i can just use whatever I want without having to press the effects button all the time. So, punching effects. There are a few differences between them. We're gonna check out every single one of them so you can hear the difference. The sounds on both devices are not the exact same, but yeah, you can understand what they're doing. So, effects number one. This is a pitch shifter. KO2 and the medieval it's not the same effect yet it does pitch shifting but not in the same way that the KO2 does yeah pretty much the same thing let's go to the next one I think that this effect actually swaps samples. And it's the same on both devices. Next one is the enter button. Which is like a repeater the same on both another repeater on one same one the tape stop which is on both devices but yeah, they just work differently. They have some slight differences. For example, here you can completely stop the track. 
and here you can add. You can just slow it down by a ton. Next one. This is some kind of panning. And here. It does a completely different thing. Some kind of modulation effect here. Next we have the filters, low pass and high pass. The same on both devices. Here you have your effects send. So if you use that, you enable the effect for everything you're playing. Next we have this you know, glitch tremolo effect. You can control its speed also with pressure. But here you can control, you know, the depth, I guess. And not the speed. But it's the same effect. Eight is a pitch down effect. Same on both devices. And lastly, the most different effect is number nine, where on the KO2 you have like a really nasty beat crusher. And here it's a completely different effect. Here it's a completely different effect. And what it does is that it shortens the release times. Yeah, completely different thing, but also a cool effect that you cannot do on the KO2. The last kind of big difference between the two devices is that the timing knob on the KO2 is just a bit repeater, so you can just repeat on any given timing um, a sound. But if you press another button, it does the exact same thing with other sounds too. What they did on the medieval version is that they changed that and now it's kind of an arpeggiator and it works like that. So it's swapping its sound to create like an arpeggio, but also if I have the keys enabled, I can do an arpeggio, an actual arpeggio. Yeah, that's one thing that you cannot do on the KO2. So another major difference is that this, the KO2 has 64 megabytes of memory, while the EP3020, the medieval version, has 128. But the truth is that uh, 96 megabytes from those 128 are used for the stock sounds, for the medieval sounds, and you cannot delete them. So you're stuck with like 32 megabytes of memory. So while T advertises that you can have up to 999 samples on those devices. I cannot do that. I tried to upload as many as I could, but I could never actually reach, I think, 550 maximum. And the reason is that many samples, even one-shot samples, are not that small. There are some sounds, for example, like a synth pad, that's maybe a single note, but if it has a long release time and a reverb on it, so more release time, it's like one megabyte. So you're using like one out of 64 megabytes just for that sound. I wanted to add more samples, but I quickly realized that is not the case. You have to choose your samples. You have to choose small samples and short samples to upload on these devices because you're going to fill this up really, really fast. And I think that's kind of a shame because nowadays 
I, I mean, you can find like a micro SD that's 128 gigabytes or something. So having a bit more storage, it would be nice. You're quite limited and I don't know why they chose deliberately to have such a small storage space. And yeah, it's, it's kind of a problem to be honest, which is the same because uh, you could have so many samples loaded in, ready to go without having the hustle of deleting and uploading new ones every now and then. If you want to choose like one of these devices, I think that they are so similar that it's, it doesn't really matter which one you get. To me, the only big downside of the Medieval is that it has half of the storage of the KO2 for your own samples. I mean, you're going to get bored of the Medieval ones pretty fast, so at some point you want to have only your own samples in this and having 32 megabytes is kind of, you know, a downside. Here you have 64 because you can delete all the stock sounds that come with it, so you have a bit more flexibility. This, to me, is the most important differentiating factor when you're trying to choose one over the other. Another reason, and the obvious one, is that they look completely different. I mean, they have different color schemes, and this has the whole medieval theme. In my opinion, the KO2 is like one of the most beautiful teenage engineering devices. I think that right after the OP1, this is their most beautiful looking device. And in terms of aesthetics, I prefer this over the medieval one. And also, one little thing but kind of weird about the medieval is that to stick to the concept they all the labels are kind of you know in a medieval fashion so there are times that i have to check on the ko2 to see what i'm doing because for example you have i don't know for sample you have demus what's that <laughs> for effects you have pocus yeah, they, they, they did that, which is kind of quirky and fun, but sometimes, you know, I'm not sure what I'm doing because um, I have to check on the KO that has, like, proper labeling to understand where is what, you know. Um, small thing, but, yeah, keep that in mind. Also, when it comes to storage, I think that in the near future, they're going to allow us to delete the medieval samples and... When that happens, this could store like double the samples that the KO can do. And uh, yeah, that would be a really big upgrade compared to the KO. Also, if you prefer the effects and the punching effects on one device over the other, that may be a reason to choose one of them. But I think that they share the same, you know, philosophy and principles. And at the end of the day, they're just know fun ways to perform and both devices can do that very well also another question is that being a teenage engineering device which is that affordable because those things cost around 300 to 350 euros you may wonder if it's worth the money of getting both of them and to be honest i think that it does because having a ton of samples on two hardware devices and being able to create complex, you know, patterns with them. It's really cool, and having two of them that you can also sync them opens up, like, a world of unlimited, you know, sample uses. You have 48 and 48, like, 96 samples at the same time, ready to go in, like, eight banks, in eight groups of sounds, which is way more than you'll ever need. So having both of these devices is pretty cool. So let's do a quick pros and cons list for the EP series, both the Medieval and the KO2. In the pro side, I really, really enjoy using this device, both the KO2 and the Medieval. I mean, it's so fun to play with this device. It's so fast to create some beats. It's so fast to create drum patterns. It's so fast to create some, you know, basic melodic stuff. And... The performance effects and the punching effects are so damn good and you can take just like a couple of bars and create a whole song just with a couple of scenes, a couple of bars and the punching effects. They're so powerful and so interesting that 
they will transform any pattern just by pressing like a couple of pads. The portability factor is a huge one. I mean, you can take this anywhere you want. The battery life is incredible. I mean, I just used the... AAA batteries and haven't swapped them in like months. And it's so easy to sample. The EP tool that you can use online to load samples is pretty great and it's pretty fast. So loading samples and swapping samples is so fast. So a couple of things that I don't really like about the KO2 and the Medieval is first one of course is the storage. I wish they had like way more storage because 64 megabytes or 32 megabytes is too limiting when you're working with samples. And if you're using like longer samples, like loops or melodic stuff, you will fill up the memory and like with a few samples. This is not something that can change, but I hope that in the future they can use the AP tool and like massively compress the files that we're loading and maybe lose some of the quality to load more samples by lowering like the, the file sizes. Maybe that's a solution to load more samples on both units and not having to change them over and over again. And another thing that you will find out as you use those devices is that there is some serious voice stealing because both of them have six voice polyphony for stereo samples and 12 voice polyphony for mono samples. So having like 48 samples for each, you know, scene or each, you know, project will definitely lead to some voice stealing between the samples. If you're working with like really short samples, it's not a huge deal, but if you have like a bit longer samples that will take like three, four, five steps, you will definitely hear that. But at the same time, for such an affordable device, I mean the 12 voice polyphony for mono samples and drums, you know, are mostly mono, it's, it's fine, I guess. And sometimes those cuts and sounds may sound deliberate, like you programmed the device to do that or created some kind of chalk groups. But yeah, it is there and some people are really annoyed by it. I'm not that annoyed by it, but it is something that you will definitely run into. Overall, I think that this releases by Teenage Engineering are just incredible. They gave us something really, really affordable. And while people are complaining like all the time about teenage engineering pricing i think that this is like a definitive answer to that because they're built really well they look beautiful they have a ton of features they're so fun to use really creative devices that are not expensive at all i really look forward to see what the ep series will have for the future i really hope to see like an ep synth or something else different than the sampler like we had in the pocket operators and this is like a series that i really really believe and i really like using so if you enjoy working with one shot samples and you're using samplers in general to program drums i think that these devices are pretty great i replaced my digitact with those devices because i just need more samples at the same time and I cannot be limited to like 8 or even 16 samples. So now I have as many as I want for each session and even more. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please leave a like or subscribe to the channel. If you have any questions or suggestions, please leave a comment. And I hope to see you on the next one. Love you.